she is offered a year of residency in Los Angeles for a freelance photography gig. Alex doesn't know how to deliver the news to Sergey. She lays in bed for a long time to process her shock. She is excited, but concerned about how Sergey will react. Sergey notices her silence and asks her if she's fine. When Alex tells him about the job offer, Sergey is happy for her, especially since it's related to photography, her dream career. But when Alex informs him that it's in Los Angeles, his reaction changes. Alex is British-born, so she can easily adjust to the language in America. Unlike her, Sergey only speaks Spanish. Her job as an English teacher is short-term, and Sergey is aware of this. However, he doesn't want Alex to go, since it will postpone their plan of having a child. Sergey confronts Alex for not telling him about the application. Alex explains it was Marta, the curator, who submitted her application. She did not expect to be hired, since she submitted the application months ago. Sergey asks her why she said yes if she doesn't want the job. He is sure that she's only pretending, that she doesn't want to go. When Alex denies that she wants the job, Sergey is still unconvinced. He knows she will leave at any time. Sergey loses his appetite for breakfast, and leaves the room angrily. His reaction makes Alex cancel her plan and she assures him that she won't go anywhere. Sergey apologizes for how he reacted, and tells her that he changed his mind. He allows Alex to go and participate in the projects and exhibits. He tells her he'll visit Los Angeles after taking his boards. He believes in Alex's talent, and trusts that she will come back. They have spent seven years trying for a baby, and another year of trying is nothing in comparison. Sergey also tells her that he is willing to learn English, since he wants to follow her there. Though Alex is thankful for his motivation and support, she insists that she doesn't want to go anymore. Days go by, and Alex is already in Los Angeles. It turns out that she did want to go, but thought twice because of Sergey. It's her second day in the city, and she has been communicating with Sergey through video calls. She shows Sergey her apartment, which is on the second floor. Her unit is all painted white, and the walls are blank. The sofa, bed, and table are white too. She jokingly says that she's afraid to sit there and drink coffee. Alex lays down on the carpet, and Sergey tells her that the place is nice, but small. Despite it being nighttime in Spain, he listens to her stories eagerly. Sergey tells her that their house in Barcelona smells like her, and it makes him miss her a lot. Alex is bored on her fifth day in Los Angeles. The room is silent as she eats her meal in peace. She roams around to look for something to do. She remembers her books, and begins to unpack the box they're in. She places them on the shelf neatly, though it takes her a few attempts to stop them from falling. When she's done, she decides to call Sergey. The time difference between Spain and Los Angeles has started to hinder their late-night talks. Sergey tries to keep his eyes open, but falls asleep in the middle of the call. Alex laughs as she stares at his facial features lovingly. Sergey wakes up, and asks for permission to end the call. He is too sleepy, and he needs to get up early tomorrow. Alex and Sergey bid each other goodbye and hang up. On day 33, the couple gets used to their setup. No matter how busy they are, they dedicate time out of their day to talk virtually. Alex is folding her laundry during today's video call. She has an obsession with organizing her things, and Sergey teases her to stop matching her socks and focus on him instead. A week later, Alex is giving Sergey a tour of the neighborhood through Google Maps. She shows him the places she's been trying to photograph and explains the difficulties she's been having with it. Alex moves from street to street, and Sergey laughs because the website blurs the passerby's faces. Their routine continues, and Sergey asks her if she's been eating well during their next video call. Alex shows him the kitchen and her organized pots, pans, and plates. Alex only has a few things in her kitchen, and he tells her to buy more in case she gets any guests. Alex stares blankly into the laptop, and it seems like what Sergey just said bothered her. He asks her if she's fine, and assures her that he's there to help her with any problems she's having. Alex admits that she doesn't know why she's in Los Angeles. She has only been staying there for a little over a month, but is already beginning to feel out of place. Alex cheers her up, and suggests that she should go out and have some fun. He says it's better to wander, meet new people, and explore the place than to stay in her apartment. Taking Serga's advice, Alex invites her new friends, Lisa and Paul, to her apartment. She begins to panic, because she doesn't know how to cook, and calls Sergey to ask for some help. Sergey starts giving her cooking advice, while she dices onions the wrong way. The pieces are big and uneven. He tells her that the onion pieces look like a monkey chopped them by hand. Alex doesn't mind him, and throws everything in the pan with some oil. Sergey tells her that the onion pieces need to be smaller, and the oil should be hot first. He freaks out when she begins cutting the onions in the hot pan. But she informs him that she hasn't turned on the stove yet. She tells him that she regrets cooking a meal, instead of just buying one. Sergey instructs her to remove the onions, and try heating the pan. Alex refuses, because they are all soaked in oil. Sergey calms her down, and instructs her to get another onion and start over. 
They spend the rest of their call, joking around about Alex's terrible cooking skills. Alex becomes close to her new friends, and they start going to different spots in the city to take pictures. She shows Sergey all the shots she took of trees, landmarks, iconic buildings, and the enormous binoculars at Google's office. Alex has already talked to Sergey about the binoculars before, so she thinks he will love the picture. He tells her that he doesn't remember her talking about them. This upsets Alex, since she is sure that she has shown them before, and she abruptly stops the conversation. Sergey becomes busy with the incoming Lysinger exam. His friend calls, but he declines the call to focus on studying. Sergey wants to pass the boards to finally become a full-time teacher. Alex, on the other hand, is busy editing photos. Sergey calls, but her eyes stay focused on her work, even after she picks up. He almost ends the call, because she won't listen to him. Alex stops him, and says they can talk even if she's busy. She asks him how his day went. Sergey tells her that he feels immense pressure of the exam, and it's making him not want to take it. Alex cheers him up, because she believes he can do it. She tells him that he is smart, and all he needs is to focus. Happy from hearing his girlfriend's praise, Sergey grabs his new puppy Paco, and shows it to her. Alex thinks the dog is cute, even though it almost covers the laptop's camera. When Sergey removes it to talk to her, his signal is slow, and he appears pixelated on Alex's computer. Alex asks for permission to end the call, because she needs to work. Sergey agrees and hangs up. On Alex's 101st day in Los Angeles, they decide to go on a virtual date. Sergey cooks an elaborate meal and lights a candle beside his laptop, and Alex does the same on her table. The couple wears their best outfit, they look like they are going out for a fine dining experience. Sergey makes fun of Alex's meal, telling her that he is sure it tastes bad. Alex laughs and offers him a taste by placing the fork near the camera. Sergey pretends to eat it by chewing the food he prepared. They both have fun and propose a toast to celebrate the night. Alex and Sergey miss each other, but the 10,000-kilometer distance between them stops them from kissing and hugging. Days have passed, and Alex finds herself spending most of her time with friends and co-workers, instead of talking to Sergey. He only sees her through the video she posts online, but Sergey is fine with it, as long as she lives life to the fullest. It makes him happy to see her giggle, while sunbathing with her friends. He wants to give her time to explore Los Angeles, and develop her photography skills. While Sergey is preoccupied with missing her, Alex is busy taking photos of products for an advertisement gig. She pours all her focus into taking shots of each gadget, and the DIY mini studio she made in her apartment. As time passes, Sergey is burned out with the household chores. Alex was the one to organize things in the house, and this left Sergey clueless about the whereabouts of the supplies. He gets irritated trying to fix the comforter of his bed, and eventually gives up. Days go by without Alex responding to his messages. One night, Sergey is staring at his laptop with a lonely expression. Apart from Alex, his only source of happiness is his guitar and music. Suddenly, Sergey gets a call notification from her. She is delighted to tell him about her night out with friends. She has also learned a new dance step, and wants to teach it to him. Alex instructs him to stand up and move his body. However, he's not in the mood, so he remains seated. Sergey apologizes because he has no energy to dance, and Alex begins wondering why he's acting strange. When he tells her that he took the boards yesterday, Alex is shocked. She apologizes for forgetting such an important day of his life. She asks how it went, but he tells her that he is not in the mood to talk about it. By his response, Alex can tell that he found the exam difficult. He says he wanted to talk to her about it yesterday, but she was busy. She apologizes again, Sergey assures her that it's fine. But deep inside, he is dismayed. From that day on, Alex puts an effort to keep in touch with Sergey. But this time, Sergey doesn't feel like talking to her. When Alex asks him how his day went, Sergey dismissively replies that his everyday routine doesn't change much. Alex is pissed off by his response, and suggests that they should talk about different things instead of their relationship. She tells him that they always have fun talking about random things. Sergey disagrees, he thinks it won't be fun this time, because it feels like an obligation to talk to her on the computer. Alex is irritated, and tells him that they don't need to talk if he doesn't want to. Nights have gone by with Sergey rarely receiving updates from Alex. He is gulping down a glass of liquor while looking at his phone. Alex finally texts him photos of her trip. Sergey asks her for her whereabouts, since she is late to their scheduled video call. Alex says she is busy, and will be home late tonight. She won't be able to call him later, so she wishes him goodnight through text. Sergey is dismayed and tired of her excuses. He envies her for being happy abroad, while he is left alone in Spain. He slowly begins falling into depression. He has felt like a failure ever since the board exam, and he has been forced to deal with these feelings on his own. Sergey is scrolling through his Facebook feed, when he comes across Alex's post about her Los Angeles tour. Sergey stalks her account, and sees multiple posts of her with her friends. She looks really happy to be with them, and this makes Sergey sad. He feels like Alex is happier without him. The fact that she can update her social media, but can't find the time to talk to him, upsets him further. He indulges in smoking and drinking to cope with his sadness. Sergey's anger towards Alex piles up. He explodes when Alex calls him after a long time. 
He throws all her belongings in front of the camera. This includes her book, photographs, and the precious plant she owns. Sergei wants to get rid of the things that remind him of her. He is tired of hearing the neighbors ask about her, some saw her posts, and admired her flourishing career. It made Sergei envious and angry because her success served as a reminder of his failures. Alex cries and pleads with him to stop. But Sergei continues and throws away the undeveloped film she had stored in an album. Alex begins sobbing from pain and anger. She shuts her laptop and ends the call. After she ends the call, Sergei pulls a shelf down in a fit of rage. The couple has only been separated for five months, but it seems like their relationship will end before Alex's project will. Sergei regrets what he did and tries to compose an email to reach out to Alex. He asks Alex where she is because it's been two weeks since they last talked. He demands she say something to let him know if she's still there. Sergei finds his tone too authoritative, so he deletes the message before sending it. He then types a line where he apologizes for hurting her. He changes this for the second time because his pride tells him that he did nothing wrong. Sergei's next revision says that he hates asking her to email him. He knows she will ask for space and end their relationship eventually. In his final text, Sergei only asks Alex where she is. Sergei receives a response from Alex days later. According to her, she ended up in Silicon Valley the last time she took photos. The photo she sent is one of her best shots. She enjoyed crossing the streets and capturing different sites she found amusing. The last location she visited was the server farm, where companies store data. She thinks the last month of their relationship was probably stored there. In the middle of the beautiful parking lot, away from the pressures of the city, Alex realizes something. She doesn't want to give up on their relationship. Alex ends the message by saying that she is dying to see Sergei and will call him once she arrives home. On their first call after the major argument, Alex cries while talking. She says that they are the opposite in many ways, but their differences don't matter because they complement each other. They have an invisible bond that keeps her attached to him. Alex brings this bond everywhere she goes because it gives meaning to everything she does. She asks for forgiveness. Even though she promised herself not to resort to begging, she does it anyway to show him how much she needs him. For the past months, Alex has not been able to express her feelings. She has assumed Sergei can understand her and know how she feels just by looking at her eyes. She wouldn't even say I love you because she thought he could feel it. But she now realizes that feelings should be expressed clearly and I love you should be said more often. She wants to make it right this time because her life seems so gray without him. He brings colors to it through his jokes and positivity. Sergei is teary and realizes he hasn't made her laugh in the past few weeks. He explains that he lost his strength when she left him. Alex promises to make it up to him and the couple reconciles and dances through the video call. Alex's gallery opening is happening soon. Sergei wishes to go there, but tickets are expensive in early September. If he books flights after that date, he will lose his job. Alex tells him to buy a one-way ticket. She wants him to stay in Los Angeles for good. They can live together in her apartment and use the grant for their daily financial needs. Sergei refuses because he won't have anything to do there and would hate being a house husband. Alex suggests that he sell the apartment to teach music in Los Angeles. She sees no reason to live in the same apartment forever. Sergei finds her idea crazy. Once her contract ends in December, they would be returning to Barcelona homeless and jobless. Alex tells him that it will be fine. He tells her to think straight because they have only three months to decide before the contract ends. It's safer to maintain their current setup and he asks her if she can do it. Alex agrees to his decision, but deep inside, she wants him to come to Los Angeles and live there for good. Sergei notices her reaction and suspects that she disagrees with him. He asks her to share her thoughts and feelings. At that, Alex shares that a gallerist loved her work last time, and he is willing to finance her for a major project next year. Sergei is unhappy to hear this, but tells her that she can stay longer. Alex insists that she wants them to live together while she does her job. To Sergei, it sounds like she doesn't want to be with him but wants him to be with her. She won't sacrifice her plans for him, but expects him to do that for her. He tells her that he likes living in Barcelona and they already have plans for the future. Alex argues that the plans involve both of them, so he'll have to wait for her anyway. Sergei looks upset, especially about postponing the baby for even longer than they initially intended. She promises him that they'll do it once they are ready, but Sergei suspects that she's delaying everything because she doesn't want a family with him. Alex pleads with him to at least try living with her abroad, and they can return to Barcelona soon or move to London. Sergei is disappointed and makes her choose between staying in Los Angeles for her career or returning to Barcelona to be with him. Alex is teary because she stayed in Spain for him for years, but he can't fly to Los Angeles for her. Sergei apologizes, but she can't make him wait forever. He asks her again to choose between her career and him. When she doesn't give him an answer, Sergei ends the call, and subsequently, their relationship. 
Months pass by, and Alex accepts her life without Sergey. While decorating her dull apartment walls with the pictures she took in Los Angeles, she hears someone knock on the door, it's Sergey. He is looking at her with an emotional expression. Meanwhile, Alex is shocked and doesn't know how to react. She asks him why he did not call to let her know. Sergey attempts to leave, because he feels that she doesn't want him there. Alex stops him and invites him inside. She touches his hands to make sure she's not dreaming. She then hugs him tight, to show him how much she missed him after all those months apart. Sergey missed her too. He hugs her back to show it. Yet, when they go in for a kiss, it's expectedly awkward. They know they have not settled their argument yet, so they pull away. Sergey pretends to be distracted by the furniture in the apartment. He awkwardly asks where she bought everything, and she asks if he wants something to drink and eat. Sergey replies that soup is fine for him. While Alex heats the soup she made last night, Sergey gives her a bottle of whiskey he bought from Spain. Alex appreciates this, and shares that her project is almost done. She is just waiting for the other photos at the lab. Sergey stares at her while she speaks, but looks away when their eyes meet. Alex does the same because she misses him, but is too shy to express it. She asks him if he wants to sleep, but Sergey refuses because he slept on the plane earlier. She asks him how long he will stay. To her surprise, he tells her that he is willing to stay as long as she wants him to. He also tells her that he is interested in going on road trips with her, to explore the city. Alex is delighted, and offers him a glass of whiskey while he eats the soup. She also drinks some, and sits beside him. At that moment, the couple gets comfortable with each other, and Alex thanks him for the surprise arrival. Sergey jokingly complains, that he expected her to jump desperately into his arms and kiss him like in the movies. As they drink their whiskey, they laugh fondly. Out of nowhere, Sergey begins crying while looking at her. He asks her if he did something wrong in their relationship. Alex assures him that everything is fine. In the end, they kiss passionately after finally breaking the 10,000-kilometer distance that separated them. 